Hello everyone. Welcome back to this introductory course on uh, material science and engineering offered by Edipedia World. The last set of lectures which we saw was an introductory set of lectures into, into the basic world of material science and engineering. This lecture will start to dive deeper and will start by studying the atomic structure which is uh, more of a chemistry 101 knowledge but for the completeness of this course we need to rediscuss it. Uh, what about atomic structure and why do we need know this to understand material science and engineering better? The properties of a material depends on the atomic structure on one hand and the interaction between atoms and molecules on the other hand. Therefore, the basic building block of the material will help define the properties to which the material is being used and also the atoms which are the constituent atoms of the material will interact with each other via different forces. Therefore, that will also affect the property. This set of lectures will focus on atomic structure to start with and then with the different forces and interactions between atoms and molecules. This necessitates the understanding of atomic structure. To begin with, let us see the very basic structure of a simple atom. This is the simplistic representation of an atom as presented by Bohr in Bohr's model. As we can see, here are some particles with a negative charge, here are some partic positive charge and the green particles are supposedly chargeless. Let us see each of them individually one by one. The negatively charged particles which seem to move in orbits around a center is known as electron. So electrons are basically negatively charged particles. What are the properties of an electron? Electron is having a charge of minus 1.602 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb. Okay. That is the charge. What is the mass of electron is 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. It's uh, in the order of minus 32 kg. And finally, as I said, this electron seems to revolve around what is known as nucleus. This is the nucleus of the atom and the radius of revolution. That is the distance from here, the center to this place is in the order of angstrom and that is what defines the atomic size the distance from the center to the outermost electron roughly gives you an idea about the atomic size next let's see what are these positive particles these positive particles are known as protons and uh, similar to the charge of the electron which was negative 1.602 into 10 power minus 19 protons have same magnitude but are oppositely charged that is they are positively charged and have same magnitude the point of difference is the mass the mass of electron was in the order of 10 to the power minus 31 Whereas the mass of a proton is in the order of 10 to the power minus 27. That is four orders of magnitude different. So a proton is much more heavier than an electron. Then third part is as I mentioned the central region which homes the proton is known as the nucleus of the atom. And the nucleus of the atom is in the order of 10 to the power minus 15 meter. So the radius of the nucleus is kind of 10 to the power minus 15 meter which is a distinctive point of difference from the radius at which the electrons revolve around the nucleus which was angstrom that is 10 to the power minus 10 meter. Now let us see the third kind of particle that constitute an atom the green particles. The green particles are known as neutron. What is a neutron? Neutron is a chargeless particle. That is, it has zero charge. The mass is very similar to that of a proton. It's very, very slightly more than that of a proton. It is 1.675 into 10 power minus 27 kg. And uh, thereby, even a neutron is kind of four orders of magnitude heavier than an electron and the same uh, radius that is the radius of nucleus in the order of 10 to the power minus 15 meter as that of the proton. Now the interesting take home from here is 
if you observe the heavy particles that is the proton and the neutron both reside in the nucleus isn't it the very light particles electron revolve in these orbits therefore the mass of the atom almost completely resides at the center or resides at the nucleus of the atom now the proton and the neutron together is what is called as the nucleus so this is my nucleus and in a particular atom if the atom is supposed to be electrically neutral and how is that possible that is possible only when the number of electrons and the number of protons are same thereby the negative charge imparted by all the electrons will be counteracted by the positive charge imparted by all the protons so in order to maintain the neutrality of an atom the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons this whole description is the basic bohr's model description in which the electron revolves around the nucleus in fixed orbits we'll see this in details in the next slide now let us uh, familiarize ourselves with a few terminologies atomic number the atomic number represented by a capital z represents the number of protons atomic mass is the sum of the number of proton and the number of neutron as i said the bulk of the mass lies in the nucleus that is within the proton and the neutron therefore neutron the electrons are not going to come into the picture then a mole is defined as 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 atoms or molecules that is the definition of a mole an isotope is uh, rather two materials which has same atomic number but different mass number are known as a isotope to give you an example an isotope would be chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 both have a uh, atomic number 17 but chlorine 35 has a mass number 35 whereas chlorine 37 has a mass number 37 uh, that's why they both are isotopes okay so this gives you a brief definition of the different terminologies uh, pertinent with atomic structure next we'll see the bohr's model in description we'll see what is the limitation of bohr's model and how that gives rise to what is known as wave mechanical model and what does that mean okay so this is the same picture which we saw while discussing the atomic structure this was the simplistic picture known as the bohr's model in the bohr's model the electrons revolve around the nucleus in fixed orbits so these are the orbits in which the electron revolve around the nucleus they cannot revolve in any arbitrary orbit that is to say you cannot have a orbit intermediate between two defined orbits and electron will not be able to revolve in those so only fixed distances the electrons can revolve around the nucleus energy of electron is quantized now since we have said that the electrons are revolving around in fixed orbits the energy level will be defined by the orbit therefore the energy is quantized it cannot take up any value it wants it has to be either the energy level at this radius or the energy level at this radius or the energy level at the next quantum radius now this quantization of the locations at which electrons can be present results in what is known as energy states see over here what you can observe there is a orbit which is closest to the nucleus in which the electrons can revolve then there is a second closest orbit so there are states of orbit and each state has a particular energy associated with it therefore what we can say is that these are energy states in which the electron can revolve the radius closest to the nucleus in which the electrons revolve is known as the ground state this is the energy representation for a hydrogen atom drive home the point we are using hydrogen atom which is the simplest atom because it has one electron now the electron ideally will be at the lowest energy state that is the orbit which is closest to the nucleus and 
we define the energy at infinity that is very very far away from the nucleus as zero electron volt and then after calculations it is found that for the hydrogen atom at the lowest energy state the energy level for the ground state turns out to be minus 13.6 electron volt but suppose we give some energy into the electron which is at the ground state what it will do it will absorb that energy and jump to a higher state such that it has sufficient energy to jump from the first state to the second state then the energy will increase from minus 13.6 electron volt to minus 3.4 electron volt similarly we can increase the amount of energy input and we can keep pushing the electron further away from the nucleus and each of this state is a energy state this lowest energy state is the ground state then the first excited state second excited state and if you give sufficiently high amount of energy then what is known as ionization can take place what happens in ionization the electron is completely rejected from the atom that is electron gains sufficient amount of energy to be freed from the atom and the atom will develop a single positive charge because it has lost a single negative charge okay so this was the basic idea behind the bohr's model now what is the drawback of bohr's model bohr's model defines definitive orbits in which electrons can revolve but what we know is that any charged particle which is accelerating will lose energy this is the fundamental 101 of physics okay therefore this electrons which are revolving revolution is accelerated motion therefore the electrons should not be able to keep moving in the same path it should slowly lose energy and spiral down into the nucleus that does not happen thereby there is some drawback obviously in the Bohr's model which it does not account for this led us to the development of what is known as wave mechanical model and wave mechanical model let's see what does it talk about wave mechanical model the only difference between wave mechanical model major difference between wave mechanical model and Bohr's model is that Bohr's model defines specific paths right you have a path here or here whereas wave mechanical model says that electrons do not move in specific path rather you have probability distribution of regions where electron can be found there will be some region where the probability of finding an electron is more there will be some region where the chances of finding an electron will be less but you cannot specify that this is the orbit there will be a range of orbits with probability at different location this leads to what is known as an electron cloud because you are not specifying where exactly the electron is it can be anywhere in this whole bound region this is my nucleus and this uh, wave mechanical model comes up from the idea that a electron like a wave has a dual nature that is a electron can sometimes behave as a wave and sometimes as a particle now let me try to show you how the probability distribution will look like this is the electron cloud but specifically speaking suppose that this is my probability and this is my radius okay this is the nucleus which is lying over here and I am trying to draw the probability along this path okay so what is observed is very close to the nucleus the probability of finding the electron is almost zero the probability keeps rising rising and near the Bohr's orbit radius the probability is maximum and after that it starts to decrease again and it tends to zero at infinity so there is a probability to find electrons even at a very very far distance but the probability is very less the probability to find an electron is maximum at Bohr's radius but it's not 100% at Bohr's radius there's a clear distribution and this kind of solves the problem which we encountered in the Bohr's model whereby accelerated electrons 
should lose energy and spiral down into the nucleus okay so this brings us to the end of the lecture on the basic structure of a atom we discussed uh, Bohr's model we discussed the components of a nucleus we discussed the wave mechanical model and how it is better than the Bohr's model next lecture will focus on what are known as the quantum numbers. The quantum numbers kind of give you an idea about the address of an electron. Each electron will be located at a certain region in the atom. So the quantum number specifies the address of the electrons. And after knowing that address, we'll see how is the arrangement of electrons in an atom actually done. Hopefully, I'll see you here in the next lecture. Have a great day. Goodbye.